Hey, Steve Vincent here. Uh, today we're going to talk about cycle carts. Uh, the two carts behind me are my Model T and my kids Model Wasp. They're in the covers right now. Kind of want to show you what that looked like. Uh, these things sit in the garage for weeks or months sometimes, especially in the summertime when we don't run, run them very much. Um, so I, we made covers for them. This material we got at Joann's and sewed them together. Had to learn how to sew. So if you want to learn new skills, cycle carts all for you. Welding, metal fabrication, woodworking, engine stuff, learning how to mount tires on wheels. That's a whole deal in itself. And um, so, anyway, let's talk about cycle carts. Okay, so this is the first cart I built. This was built in 2015. Um, I met a man named Dennis Thomas, and if you've been on YouTube around cycle carts, you know who Dennis Thomas is. I met him at the Copper State 1000 in April 2015. He let me drive his number 27 Model T Ford. And for days I told myself, no, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. And the next thing I know, um, down the rabbit hole on cyclecarclub.com. Anyway, so tons and tons of information on the Cycle Car Club website. If you want to know where that's at, here's their site right there. So cyclecarclub.com. Um, from that website, it's a lot of information, a lot of pictures, a lot of how-tos, a lot of things that other people have done. You can learn from their mistakes or the triumphs. Uh, a few things we learned on these, we'll kind of touch on later, but uh, these are essentially go-karts, simple frame construction, 17-inch Honda CT90 wheels or CT110 wheels. Uh, these are available also from, I guess, China or Thailand. Uh, the new ones, the vintage cart co I think, are from Thailand. Anyway, this is a basic, what they call a Stevenson form of the frame, simple ladder frame construction, go-kart engine. It's got a GX200 motor in the back. You can see it through the opening here. Um, this one's got a upgraded carburetor and header on it. Um, simple, you see the gas tank through the opening there on the top. This has Zeus fasteners to remove this rear panel to get access to the motor if you have to work on it. Um, yeah, so this is all handmade. Uh, the hood is formed on a slip roller. Dennis Thomas is kind to let me use a slip roller at his house. The body's all aluminum. The frame is one by three rectangular frame. You can see that there. I'll post a couple pictures of the frame uh, drawings that I used. It's got a drop axle and simple leaf springs on the front. The spindles we're using, these are actually upgraded from the Azusa type spindles. These are made by Vintage Cart Co. to replicate the Azusas, but they're a lot sturdier and um, have bushings in them so they're not quite so sloppy. There's very, very little wheel play. The, the previous one, if you watch one of my other videos about the spindle upgrades, it's a lot of wheel play. Front suspension, uh, these have suspension, but you know, they're, I mean, it does move. You press on it like this, just kind of push it on it. You know, you don't really, I don't know if you really notice it even when you're driving it. But the rear suspension is solid axle, no suspension in the rear. Um, it's pretty simple design. It's just got a few cross members under here. You can see there's the sprocket on the brake, the disc brake, it's a mechanical disc brake. Some guys are running differentials with hydraulic disc brakes. You see there's still mud on there from a recent outing. And there's our buddy Dennis Thomas, the Godfather. Uh, the Vintage Carco guy is dubbed him the Godfather because he kind of, um, kind of inspired all the madness going on here in Arizona with the Scottsdale Grand Prix and all the cycle cars that have been built here. Outside of uh, Washington State, I think we've probably got the most cycle carts active in the country. Um, so this has been rebodied. I'll post a picture of what the body used to look like. I rebuilt the entire tail section, bought an English wheel, and taught myself how to do that. It's harder than it looks on the internet. Uh, I thought I was going to get this all in one panel, or at least this top piece in one panel, and maybe one panel down here, but there's actually one panel, two panels, three, four, five, six, seven, eight panels that make up the bottom, so there's actually ten panels all together for the whole tail section, all riveted together. You could have, possibly, you could have... Uh, TIG welded all this, but I think this is fine. It's got a kind of a rough, racy car look. The Zeus fasteners make it easy to take on and off. Um, I'll put a brass dash cover on here, and I, I just kind of did my own burnishing on that. This has a quick-release wheel. It's just... Get the camera so you can see it. Press that in. It comes off. That allows you to get in and out of the car a lot easier without, without the steering wheel being in the way. Um, important if you do it with one of these type of things, make sure it's always fully locked position before you get back in the car. Uh, so this is kind of in, in the middle of revamping. So 
about this time last year, like I said, I redid the rear, rear shell section. Redid the hood. The hood had a more of a slope, came from the nose up to here, and this wasn't here. So I redid the hood and kind of did this little windscreen deal. That was tough to make. Getting the shape and then bending this piece so it could be attached. Never worked with aluminum before, so it was kind of an experience to learn how to do that. Uh, the only steel panels on this car are right here. This is actually steel. This could have been aluminum at the time. I wanted to get the aluminum, uh, the rivets, or the uh, louvers punched, but I didn't have any aluminum, so I went to Har or Home Depot, and they had sheets of steel. I think this is maybe 16 gauge. Uh, maybe, yeah, I think 16 gauge steel. Anyway, it's just, they showed, sold these sheets, and it was perfect size. Had them, uh, had the louvers punched, and it kind of gives it a racy look. This logo is my version. This is my last name, Vincent. This is a dog my grandparents had. His name was Viscount. So called the Viscount Vincent Model T Ford Special. Uh, this logo is obviously the Indianapolis 500 logo, but I also saw it on my original inspiration car, which was the Barber Warnock Special. If you Google Barber Warnock, you'll see a restored version. It's a Model T race car. Very, very cool. It's got the similar, similar shape to this. Not exact, but pretty close. So I'm in kind of midstream on this. I was gonna go ahead and my original body had, this was all upholstered with nice vinyl with lube, with uh, just like this is this sewing mark, or I don't know what you call these, pleats, I guess. So I was getting ready to do this, but I decided I'm gonna drop this floor down. Right now it's a plywood floor, it's got a two inch drop. I'm gonna drop it down four inches uh, to get the center of gravity down lower. So there's a good shot of the braking gas pedal. So you got the gas on the right, brake on the left. Pretty simple construction. If you can see there, um, at the very front, oh, maybe I can zoom in. There's a pillow block there where the, uh, let's see it, let's see. It's a little tough to see, but maybe you can see the pitman arms there. That is a pillow block for a swamp cooler. And there's another one right here by the steering wheel. Um, gosh, sorry, right there. That's just a pillow block for a swamp cooler. About six bucks at Ace. I was trying and trying and trying to find something that would take the play out of this steering system but also be turnable so anyway this works pretty good I've had a couple guys who just you know use a piece of plate steel drilled a hole in it then it's it tends to get sloppy over time this has been almost three years of use and it's been holding up really well I figured if they failed their you know two bolts can replace it pretty simply and uh, so there's a little bit of bushing in there and of course there's the thing that turns and there's collars on both sides to keep the the Drive, uh, the steering shaft from going back and forth. So anyway, the next thing is to drop the floor. I started, I got just got off track. So we're going to drop the floor down to get the center of gravity lower. Uh, we've had some occasions where I've been on two wheels, and that's not where you want to be on these. Kind of scary. Um, this one's been modified. Initially, this the wheelbase from the front wheel to the rear hub was 66 inches. Now 63. I discovered because I patterned this off of Dennis Thomas's number 27. You can almost, I don't know if you can see it right here, but through the wheel, but there's a plate here, there's a line. Um, this is where the axle used to be. I moved it forward three inches and then just blocked this off to strengthen it. The reason I did that, when I built it, I patterned it off Dennis Thomas's car and he had a 72 tooth sprocket. So that put the cross members that run, there's one behind the seat. Actually, I can pull the seat out. You can see this a lot better. Oh yeah, there you go. So this cross member, was three inches away from this, or actually five or six inches. There was a ton of space. So I've got a 60 tooth sprocket in there for a number 35 chain. So it's a very small sprocket compared to a 72 tooth, which would be quite a bit larger, or even a, a 40 tooth, uh, excuse me, a 40 chain 60 tooth sprocket, which my son's cart has. It's a much bigger sprocket. Anyway, anyway there's a ton of ways to space back here. I realized I could scoot the motor forward. Um, which would also shorten the tail section when I built this new tail section. It was really, really long and I didn't want it to be that way. So I shortened it up, moved the motor forward as best I could. And you can kind of see the torque converter there. There's the throttle cable. And um, yeah, so it just allowed it to shorten the, the tail end, which you don't want a whole lot of weight back there swinging around behind you because it makes the back end tail happy and make you uh, drift too much. So anyway, um, so the next thing on the agenda for this cart is to lower the seat position down a couple more inches. So I'll maybe make a video of that and we're going to make that out of aluminum instead of wood. That'll take some, take some weight out of it. So over here is my son's cart. This was built in, I guess a year later, 2016. 
we built the original red cart for both of us to enjoy and we built it so that he could he could drive it also it's, I think he was eight years old at that time but he decided you know what yeah, it's more fun we have two of us running around so can we build another one I said well of course we can so this one has gone through a couple of design changes originally it was going to be a you see the old World War II gauges in there this is from 1940 I think it was from 42 and this is from 46 got them from a, a local airplane recycler so initially this was going to be a I think it's a 19, oh boy, now I forget the year. The Marmon Wasp it was bright yellow, one Indianapolis, I think the first Indianapolis 500 winner, something like that. Anyway, uh, he decided he wanted that shape. That's kind of where this tail section, because that Marmon Wasp has a tail section similar to that. The back end similar to this. But then we went to Vintage Car Co. and they had a, basically Dennis Thomas front end, it was what this is off the Marmon Wasp. And they had a warbird. It was green, had this shark tooth design on it. He saw that and he said, Oh, Dad, no, we got to have this. So, change of plans, just decided to re redesign the front end. The frame was already built at this point, so we kept the frame style um, and added this whole front end to look like a, well, basically like a P40 from World War II. And in doing our research on the P40, apparently the P40, the 39, and the 38 all used the same Allison V12. And my grandfather, Stephen J. Sun, uh, not Vincent, but Sun, S-U-N, was a pilot in the 68th Fighter Squadron, the Lightning Lancers, during World War II. He was stationed in well, all over the South Pacific, Guadalcanal, places like that, uh, New Caledonia. Um, and he flew the P-39 Air Cobra. So this was his squadron. That's the actual, I found this on the internet. They're still using this exact same logo. I think they existed up until 2001, this fighter squadron. So I was able to get that logo, which was pretty cool. Uh, Jack at the Vintage Car Club helped me with that logo, the uh, Shark Tooth. They already had the program, so he's had a uh, place print up the logo for us for that, so I don't have to paint that. So this one's real popular. It wins car shows. He's already won two trophies in two shows he's entered. Won best, uh, best circle card at the Clarkdale Grand Prix this past year, and he won a, a trophy at, I think it was like Judge's Choice or something like that, at a, regular, at a real car show with actual hot rods and stuff. But this one's totally aluminum. So the floor in this one's totally aluminum. Um, Got the aluminum pedal. This is, I think it's 063 on the floor. The rest of the body is 050. We painted this in here green, kind of look to look like the, you know, the military primer is the interior of a lot of a plane. So that's kind of what that's painted to look like. You know, with the kind of the bomber jacket brown seat. And yeah, he really loves this car. My son is now 10. He's a cautious kid, so he doesn't run this thing hard, but it's just as fast as the other cars. It's got the same motor in it. Um, he's also got a 10, 10, a 10 tooth sprocket and a 60 tooth main sprocket and a GX200 motor. If I can get to the side, we can see the motor over here. So the way this body is designed, it's really easy to get to the motor. Real simple, there's nothing in the way. Engine cools fine. And you don't even see the motors. Most people who walk up and see this cart, they think they're soapbox derbies. They don't, they, their eye doesn't go directly to the motor. Their eye goes to the body and the wheels and they see this uh, that way. So this one's a little, slightly shorter. I think the wheelbase on this one's 61 inches or 62 inches. Or maybe it's a straight up 60. I, gosh, it's been so long since I built it now I kind of forgot. It's, it's, it's a little shorter than my cart, but it's a lot lighter. It's about 255, I think, pounds. And mine's close to 270. So anyway, those are our cycle carts. You can see this is on a trailer. We just kind of leave it on the trailer. Uh, fits on this Harbor Freight trailer, perfect. And then my cart kind of sits in front with the covers on it while we're not playing with them. So if you have any questions on cycle carts or anything else we do, let me know. I'll be happy to answer your questions as best I can. And um, as always, thanks for watching our videos. And I'll put some um, plans at the end of the video so you can see uh, if you look at the screen. And if you want me to email them to you, just send me a note and I'll email them to you. Uh, if you want to get a head start. You don't have to copy the plans. You can just use them as inspiration. Uh, you copy them if you want. I don't really care. But... Um, we're just having a ton of fun with them. So we're going to do some upgrades on these carts and make them even better. Uh, the next up for this cart is to build a little windshield. So we're going to build a small windscreen for right about there. So these things are super fun to have and own and run around. Thanks for watching. Oh, and also I forgot to mention our Facebook page. So Arizona Cycle Cart Club on Facebook. And uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day.